So why didn't Jesus forgive Judas after he had betrayed him? It's a great question because it gives us a chance to really think about forgiveness and mercy that we know that God tells us that he extends his mercy is infinite. His compassion is boundless. And so you would think that there would be no limits to his mercy and his forgiveness. And yet here we come up against a very real situation where it seems that mercy might not be enough. The forgiveness might not be enough. Now, it's very clear, I think, to contrast the experience of Peter and the experience of Judas, because both of them betrayed Jesus in a very profound way. Judas, when he handed him over to the Pharisees and the chief priests and the Sanhedrin, and Peter, when he denied him three times in the courtyard outside of the court being taking place. So both betrayed him, but one repented and the other despaired. That's the big difference, isn't it? That Peter ran away weeping and was sad, but he held on to some shred of hope that something good could come of it. He did not despair of his life, whereas Judas went and took his own life. And that's a really, really important difference when we consider why it seems that one was forgiven and one was not. The one turned to despair and hopelessness. The other held on to something. It may not have been very much. Who knows what he was thinking? Who knows why he did what he did? But as a result, he was able to receive the forgiveness of Jesus when he said, do you love me three times to correspond to the three times that he denied him in the courtyard. But returning to that notion of forgiveness, The question is, is it that God didn't forgive Judas, or is it that he couldn't forgive Judas? Here's what I mean. Imagine somebody has hurt you. They have done something to displease you, and you make that clear to them that they have offended you and ruptured the relationship. But if they don't say they're sorry, if they say, I would do it again, then how can you forgive them? You might be willing to forgive them. You might be ready to forgive them. But until they can receive that forgiveness, it's not truly forgiveness. Right? There's a two-way street to forgiveness. It's not just that you have to be willing to give forgiveness, but the other person has to be willing to receive it. That's why forgiveness can be so painful. Because one person may be ready to forgive, or may ask for forgiveness, and the other person is not ready. There's too much pain. There's too much emotion. The rupture is too hard. Right? Anytime there's sin, there is a consequence, there is a punishment that needs to be undergone by someone, at least in this life. That's just the reality of things. But it's not until there is a repentance that there is a return or a, or, or a recognition that something happened and a willingness to reach out to restore the relationship on both parties that forgiveness can take place. So in that sense, we can see that it's not that God was not willing to forgive Judas. He was ready to forgive him. But Judas did not accept that. And I think sometimes that's a really important lesson for us as disciples because Judas, what he must have been thinking, or I imagine what he was thinking, after he had betrayed his Lord and realized that whatever it was he thought he was doing was a failure and that he had actually betrayed his master, the one man who brought him so much, that he cared for so much. Why didn't he wait? Why didn't he believe? Why didn't he trust? Why didn't he return? For some of us, I think it's due to pride. I think because we get in our heads, I did this, I don't deserve forgiveness. I don't deserve to have any blessings after what I've done. 
And in our head, that's about us needing to do things a certain way. It's about us having to justify ourselves. It's about us needing to earn or deserve forgiveness. And that prevents people from turning back to God. I know at least in one case, I've gone to somebody who was dying and he was reluctant to go to confession because he knew that he had willfully been away from the church and he could not deal with that. He felt like a hypocrite. But in that moment, nothing should stand between us and the infinite mercy of God. That's what it means for God's mercy to be boundless. Is that no matter what we do, if we turn to Him, He will forgive. If we repent, He will forgive, no matter what we have done, for how long. That's the key. But if we don't turn to Him then he just waits. He waits and he loves and he does everything that he can, but he cannot force us to change. He cannot force us to do something we refuse to do. That's one thing he refuses to do. He gives us freedom to choose. He gave Judas the freedom to choose. He loved him all the way through. But in the end, Judas refused to turn to him. To perhaps swallow his pride and to realize, undeservedly, I can't go back to him. I simply can't. So for those of us who struggle to receive forgiveness for something we have done, we should take notes. We should be more like Peter, who certainly didn't deserve forgiveness for denying his Lord three times, even when he had promised that he would never do so. At the Last Supper, he said, Lord, I would never do this. And Jesus says, you be careful, Peter. You will do things that you never thought you could do. And maybe many of us have been in that situation. But to be capable of humbling ourselves and turning back to God so that we don't despair, so that we don't end up like Judas, that's the lesson we can learn from him. Now, just as a last little asterisk, we don't know what happens to Judas. That's one of the beautiful things of the Christian tradition. No matter what someone has done, no matter what actions they've taken, we don't know if in those last moments he did turn back to God. So we do not judge him in that way. We cannot condemn him and say that he is certainly in hell. We don't know that. We don't know if anybody is there because we don't know where their heart was at the last moment. Did he repent? Did he turn back to God who was ready to forgive? That's the hope that we hold, not just for Judas, but for many people who have done such terrible, wicked things and seemed not to repent. In those last moments, did they see? Did God touch them with grace? That is our hope as Christians. God bless, and we'll see you next time.